Hello. Uh, I actually already did some of this, and I've had to revert it because I wasn't recording properly. I've had a lot of recording problems recently. But the big thing that we need to discuss is bugs in Unity. Um, they've introduced a bunch of brand new bugs with this new release, and if you are doing this at the same time I'm doing it, then you probably will encounter the same bugs. Um, the first thing is, sometimes the scripts get desynced somehow. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that happens or why it happens, but the end result is that I sometimes get weird warnings that don't make any sense and I have to close and reopen Unity to reload them. Um, the other thing that happened is all of my line endings changed, and so I had to save them all. I, I don't know why that happened. Um, and the last thing that happened is that the animator controllers uh, detached everything from the any state. So I already fixed it, but these lines went away, so I had to rebuild these. They were pretty straightforward, but obviously the slimes weren't flinching or dying properly. Now when you saw me killing off slimes there, you saw that the slimes were just vanishing. What we're going to do today, aside from whine about bugs in Unity, is about uh, making those death scenes make sense. We're going to have them actually work uh, much more favorably. One of the things I can do is I can change the animation to include a lot of um, additional stuff, uh, events all over the place or whatever, um, and but we need to do that before we need before we do that we need to do one thing we need to stop deleting it because right now we're deleting it right off the bat so what now that we've stopped it from being deleted it's going to go into its death cycle uh, and it'll actually animate the death but it'll never vanish so then what we need to do is we need to go into the animation and we need to add in a value into the animation uh, so that we can have it actually die and you'll notice I've actually already added this event It's over here. I just put it near the end, and it's just the it calls die animation complete. Uh, and I thought about deleting it, but I already shown you how to add events to animation, so it hardly matters. The things we need to remember: these animation events they get called on every script that's attached to the same object as the animator. So if you look at the slime, uh, let's go ahead and look at the right side because that's a little bit easier to see here. The animator is right here. So everything on this. Is going, is going to check and see whether there is a die animation complete function and call it if there is. If it doesn't find any, it'll throw an error. But it's, it's going to find one because we're going to put one here in the mob AI script. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and kill ourselves off. No, not debug.log. Um, you know what? Rather than that, let's just debug.log after all. That way we'll be able to see the animation happen. Interesting. See, there's that bug again. I don't really know what that bug means, but um, it doesn't appear to actually mean anything. I'm not sure. Just some bug in Unity that they've recently introduced. I'm sure it'll go away by the next couple of versions. Now if we kill this guy, He'll go into his death animation, and then we'll get the we finished dying message down on the bottom, and you can see that there. So this works. All we've got to do now is actually die in a manner that suits our needs. Uh, we could create a longer death animation. We could throw in some more events. We could do all sorts of stuff that we would like to do. Um, I'm actually going to hard code everything in this case just to show you how it's done if you do need to script something like this. And that means we're going to be doing coroutines. So public, i.e. numerator, and this is how we build a coroutine. We'll call this... Uh, uh, finish dying. So here in the die animation complete we're going to say start coroutine finish dying. And down here we can say destroy game object. And that'll actually do the exact same thing that we were doing before. Of course now there's a lot of space between that die animation and the actual death that gets completed. And in that space we can put a yield return new uh, wait for seconds say three. Now this is a magic little code that you might have to look up until the day you die because it's largely nonsense unless you know exactly how IE numerators work and how coroutines work but basically this is how you wait for a certain number of seconds uh, and it also means that you don't have to type yield return true or anything like that. Uh, anyway, the um, the result is that we should now have a three second gap between when we actually finish our death animation and when we vanish. So 
So let's kill one of these guys off and take a look. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. You don't appear to have actually um, vanished, sir. Why didn't you vanish? Hmm. Interesting. So let's go ahead and take a take a look at this and see what it has to say for itself. There's that warning again. The funny thing is it actually is identifying a slime when I do get that warning. I'm not sure what the deal is. Alright, so there we are. Beginning death coroutine and completing death coroutine. This time it worked. Uh, I really don't know what's going on with, with uh, my version of Unity. That tastes an awful lot like a bug. Maybe I forgot to save it and didn't notice. That seems most likely. Alright, so now that we've got that, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and do a 4 int a equals 0, a is less than 3, a plus plus, and then we're going to go and make it blink. Float delay equals 0.5f. Um, so here, what we're going to do is we're going to say wait for seconds delay, and then we're going to say we, we want to make it invisible. We want to turn off this object. So we could do it like this, uh, set active equals false. Uh, we could go ahead and turn off the entire game object, but that means that the collider would also turn off and the physics would also turn off. And so if we k pop back into existence, we might be overlapping with someone and things will go flying in every direction. And while that might be entertaining, it's not a very good idea. So what we're instead going to do is we're going to get all of the skinned mesh renders equals uh, get components in children skinned mesh renderer. Here we go. And that'll get all the skin mesh renders. In this case, we've only got one, but there are a lot of cases where we would have several. So it's better to be uh, better to assume that we're going to need to do that a lot. Uh, and we'll just go through them all. For we'll do a for each just to show you how it's done. For each skinned mesh renderer, renderer in renderers, renderer dot enabled equals false. So what we said is we said wait for the delay and then turn all of our visuals off. And then we're going to wait for half of the delay and turn them back on. And then we're going to reduce the delay. So we'll get a flash, 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 and then it will vanish. Uh, down here at the bottom, we need to have one more to wait for a second delay or else we will destroy ourselves the instant we come back into existence and so that would be a little bit awkward. So let's go ahead and kill ourselves a slime. Um, see what happens. Flash, 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 flash. There we go. Perfect. So what do we want to do while it's flashing? I think that we would do well if we popped some coins out of the slime, or maybe some slime pellets or something, while it was dying. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a Unity event. And we've done this before. The battle unit connects to the mob AI using Unity events, and so now the mob AI is going to connect to maybe a treasure script or something. Or maybe just to a script inside of the mob AI, a function inside the mob AI. It's hard to tell. Unity event. Uh, spawn treasure. Oh, no, no call-ins there. And down here, we'll just say spawn tre uh, spawn treasure dot invoke. And what that means is that every time it vanishes, a coin will pop up. And we're doing it on the vanish because that makes the coin really obvious. So if we were to go over to the slime here and take a look, we can see now that we've got the spawn treasure and it's empty. We can go ahead and make that script do something if we would like to. Um, it's actually been 10 minutes already, so I'm not going to. But you can see that that would work out fine. What I am going to do with the remaining time is try and figure out what the hell this is. Um, so this mistagged as enemy, even though it isn't one, that happens here, and it says uh, uh, when we when we get in this when we get this we find all game all objects in the tag all objects with the tag of enemy. 
and then we look through it and we try and get the battle unit, and if we don't find one, we whine. But the problem is that we don't actually whine uh, what it is. So let's go ahead and put it in targets a dot... Oh, we actually do. Wapped slime. Wapped slime clone. There is no such thing as a slime clone. What kind of... There's nothing named slime clone. Are we spawning something and I've forgotten? No, there's a lot of battle indicator clones. There's no such thing as a slime clone. Is it inside the first person? No. Inside the player? There is a slime clone at zero zero zero. There's nothing called clone in the scene. Um, it's tagged as an enemy, although it isn't one. This feels like a bug in Unity, but I can't tell for sure. Uh, so I'll live with it for now, and I'll try and figure it out later. If you guys have a clue what it is, let me know. Uh, and maybe the next time I upgrade Unity, it'll magically go away. Either way, uh, I'll have this ready for you to upload, and be careful of these bugs. Thanks for your time.